Let's look at question 2a from the 2023 National 5 Admin and IT question paper. Now this is the spreadsheet task and you'll see here you've been asked to open up the spreadsheet Triathlon June 2023 and complete the worksheet entries. We'll come back to the printing options after we've been in and had a look at this worksheet. So here we are in the spreadsheet and we're in the worksheet called entries and we've got a whole series of notes here they're sometimes known as notes or comment boxes it's the same thing it's just on-screen instructions for you to follow so starting at number one we've been asked to merge and center cells g2 to j2 so the first thing we have to do is highlight these cells and there's different ways to do merging You'll see on my ribbon, I've got a wee icon up here above alignment that is actually the merge and center button. I could click on that. If you don't have it, you could go down to alignment and into the wee box there. And under format cells alignment, you'll see the option merge cells. Just click on OK. It does the same thing. Or you may choose to highlight cells, right click format cells and again that takes you into the alignment box but that's the first one done I would suggest you keep the comment notes on until the very end when you're doing this but for me I'll just delete them one at a time as we do them so to delete a note right click where the red triangle is and delete the note Second note, we have to rotate the text, just change direction of the text, C3, D3 and E3. So we're going to highlight it like that. And again, different ways to do it. Up here on my ribbon, alignment, you'll see there's an AB with a blue directional arrow orientation. You can drop down there and it shows you the different ways that you could change the direction of your text. Let's go for vertical text like that. Obviously, the rows got a lot wider, but it does mean that you can um, narrow the, the, the columns if you need to. Once again, you could go into the alignment, the full box there, and you'll see you have orientation where you're actually able just to move that line round to the direction that you wish the text to be. So that's that one done. And again, I'm going to delete the note and move on. I'm looking for number three. I can't actually see number three, so I'll better scroll down and see if I can find it. And here we are here. I'm just going to move this down a wee bit so we can see what's going on. And it's saying insert an appropriate formula in C38, D38 and E38. Well, an appropriate formula. So you'll see number of entries and there's a tick depending on the category. So what we're needing to do here is count all the ticks that will show how many people from each category have entered in. So down into cell C38 and we're not counting numbers. You may have been shown to go up to the ribbon and go to the, the, the sort of the auto sum and the drop down there. That's the count function. You can only count numbers and dates actually from this formula. In this case we're counting the ticks so we need the count a function. The A just stands for anything or all. All right, so equals, type in count, and you'll see the second one down is count A. Let's double click on that. It's looking for the first value. Let's start at the top of our list. And starting in C4, we're just going to highlight and go down it right through, looking for anything it finds in the cell, any ticks in this case. Once we've done that, just click on enter and it's returned seven people are in the youth A category, seven ticks. Remember, the quick way to copy a formula along once you've done one is click in the cell that has the formula. You want to take your mouse down to the bottom right hand corner, thin black cross, left click and drag along. And notice that the overall number has updated automatically and I'm going to have a quick check here and see uh, there's actually uh, the auto sum formula has been put in already for you. So we have counted the number of entries and again let's just delete the note. 
Let's go back up and see what number four is asking us to do now. I can see the comment boxes of kind of the notes have kind of got in the way here. So remember, you can just drag them out of the way if you want to get a better look at what you have been asked to do. So number four, insert a formula for H5, I5 and J5. What is the total amount of entry fees? Well, we've just calculated how many people have entered. So it's a simple multiplying the fee per person times the number in each category. So in cell H5, let's start with an equals and let's click on the fee per person for youth A, H4, and multiply with the asterisk. And we've got to scroll down to get the number of entries that you've just worked out in the previous task there. So H4 times C38, click on enter, that will take us back up to the box and it's done the first one. And again, click in that cell that has the formula in there and then go down to the bottom right hand corner, left click and copy along. So that's the three amounts put in and I'll just delete the note off. Number five, insert the label overall total fees and embolden the text. So clicking in cell G6, we're just typing it in overall total, oops, spell it properly, overall total fees. It's asking us to bold it. I'll just sort of click out and click back in and go for bold and delete the note. It's then asking for a formula to calculate the overall fees and then name this cell fees. So in cell H6, it's a straightforward auto sum. Just click up the ribbon, the auto sum there. Unfortunately, Excel is highlighting the wrong data. So just make sure if that happens, just think, what are we actually adding up here? Well, we're adding up the total amount for youth A, youth B and junior. So it's H5 to J5 and click on enter. We have also been asked to name this cell. The quickest way to name a cell is click in it. Go up to the top left hand corner into the name box it's showing H6 at the moment. Click on it, delete it and change the text to fees like that. Click on enter and if you actually click away and click back in again, you'll see up there it's no longer called H6, it's now called fees. So that's that one done. And again, let's just right click, delete it off and look for the last one. The last one asks us to format all cells appropriately. And I'm having a look here and I think everything has been formatted properly. So I'm just going to delete that one off. So that's task 2A complete. Let's now have a look at 2B. So here we are in the cash statement worksheet and we're looking at task 2B. I've just brought the question across onto the screen so we can look at both when we're working through it. So we've been asked to open the worksheet cash statement, which we have, complete it using the information below and from the entries worksheet. Again, we have some things to do here for printing, which we'll do later. All right, so the first thing we've got is first note, embolden and increase the size of the main heading. Highlight the heading. You may choose to go up to the font size with a drop down and change it that way. Or the large capital A beside that actually increases the text by two points at a time. So you may choose to do that instead. We have to bold it and that's the first one done. Remember to delete the note right click where you see the triangle and delete the note. Second, use the named cell to insert the total entry fees. Well, to link together different sheets, we need to use the equals first of all. So click on equals. We're not doing a formula here. We're using that so we can link back to the entry sheet because that's where we worked out what the total entry fees were. So click onto the entry sheet and let us now click into what was cell H6, but it's now called fees. 
and let's just click on enter and that will bring it across. And if you look up in B4, sort of looking at the formula, for want of a better word, it's showing equals fees. So you brought across the fees from the other sheet. So that's done. Delete the note. Number three, insert the value of the grant. Well, I have to go back to my question and I can see the financial notes underneath and it tells me that a grant of £500 has been received from a local company. So let's just simply just type that straight in like that. I'll delete the note and then it's asking in uh, number four, so it's, it's pointing me to actually cell C9 rather than the grey there, insert a formula to calculate the total income. A straightforward auto sum. I'll go up to my ribbon. I'll click on my auto sum there. And then I'll just highlight the values I want to add and click on enter and delete the note. Now, look in expenditure, note number five. It's saying to insert appropriate formulae in B16 and B17. Well, what are we to do about the marquee hire? Let's look at our notes again, and it's saying marquee hire, if there are over 50 competitors, the marquee hire cost will be £650, otherwise it will be 540 Now this is an if function, an if statement. So how many competitors do we have? Well, they're actually on the other sheet. If you remember, if you look down at the bottom, there was a formula to show how many people had actually entered. So we have to use this number in our if statement. So let's go back into the cash statement, back into B16 and start building up the if function. Now, you've been taught probably different ways. I'll show you the way um, I would do it. Let's start with equals if and then open the bracket. If you've been using um, the if statement previously, you could actually just type in equals and go up to the name box and see if it's there. In my case, it is there. That's one way to do it. Or you could do equals if, open the bracket and then go up to formula and go up to insert function to get the function argument box up. And here we go, step by step, building up the if statement. So what are we testing? Well, we're actually testing the number of participants. So we're going to have to go into the entries um, sheet and we're looking at that particular number. So in the entry, sh entry sheet B B39, if that is greater than 50, now if that is true, what price is it going to be? And we can see from the notes, it, 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 the, the marquee hire will be £650. So I'll just type in 650. I don't need the, the pound sign. And if it's not over 50, it must be less than 50. So the price, therefore, will be 540. We've only got two options, either 650 if it's over 50, otherwise 540. So value if false, that's where you have to put the second number. That's 540. So there is the if statement. And I just bring this box down. You'll see up there in the, the formula box up here is that's how you, that's another way you could do it if you're not using the function argument box. But that's how we do the if function. Let's just click on OK. Now we know it's actually going to be only 540 because we've only got 34 competitors. So let's see if it's worked. And indeed it has brought the lower cost over because there are under 50 people. And let's now take off the note and see what's next. Let's now look at the t-shirt costs and we're going to have to work from the notes, the financial notes, and also the information in the entry sheet. So you'll see there from the financial notes, it's telling us the price per t-shirt, but of course the number of entries we're going to have to pull across by going into the entries sheet. So, so to do this, we start off with an equals. There's different ways to do it, but I think the, the easiest way is start with the equals. We'll start with the £10 for the Youth Aid t-shirt and we will multiply that 
by the entries and it's number seven there. Okay, if you want to be sort of on the safe side, you might just want to put a little bracket around that just to make sure it does that calculation first. And we're going to add on to it. And the next calculation is the, the youth B t shirt, £11. This time multiplied by the number of entries for youth B. And again, I would just put a little bracket around there just to allow these calculations to be done sort of separately. And then a plus. And the last one is the junior t-shirt of 13 multiplied by, and this time we're using the data there in cell E38. And once again, I'll just put a little bracket round that. Click on enter, return will pull me across. And there we see that we have the t-shirts there. The total cost is £397. To get the total expenditure, note 6, again a very basic auto sum and highlight all this expenditure. Click on OK and again let's just delete the note. Number 7, insert an appropriate formula to calculate the surplus or deficit. Well that's just simply saying income minus expenditure, what are we left with? So in cell C20 equals the income minus the expenditure. Click on enter and that's what we're left with. Let me just delete the notes off again and the formatting the cells and again looking here everything looks fine so I will just delete that note, that final note. Now the last thing we have to do for this is to print a copy first of all in value view portrait with grid lines only. I would suggest we would just highlight the information and in page layout is, is look along here and is asking us to have a portrait with grid lines only so um, I actually want to print with grid lines but not with headings keeping on portrait so orientation stays on portrait I could go and have a quick look by going to file and then print and that looks like that's fine and then go back and then the other one would be printing in formula view landscape this time with grid lines and row and column heading so remember to change it to landscape there's different ways you can go but if you go into page layout you can go into orientation and change it that way and remember the quick way to get the formulas put your finger on the control key and pressing the button under the escape key on the left of your keyboard like that and again if it's asking to, sh to print with the grid lines and row and column headings we can do that if we go to file and then print just to check you'll see that looks absolutely fine the other way to work with formulas is to go into the formulas tab and actually if you'll see there show formulas it can be clicked on or off so that's the printing options there. And if I just quickly go back to the entries and just to see what we had to do here, that was a uh, task 2A. I'll just take this uh, screenshot off for a moment and just check back on the question. We had to print the breakdown table in value view showing portrait and grid lines only. So the same thing as the other one there and actually print a copy of the whole worksheet in formula view landscape, grid lines and row and column heading. So it's the same thing actually for both these spreadsheets. 